Good morning. Welcome to Lovely Lane Chapel on this Independence Day. It's good to be here together uh, to worship God. Uh, so, you know, it's a beautiful time to be uh, here at Epworth by the Sea. Um, want to um, just uh, tell everybody I'm Wayne Raz. I'm the pastor here at Epworth. And so if you're visiting with us, uh, we're glad that you came. I know we have some people from the Pearson uh, area, and we're glad to have you all with us. Uh, one of my good friends served at uh, Willacoochee in Beulah for many years, uh, so we, uh, we know the area pretty well. I did a couple of revivals out down there, so welcome, glad to have you with us. Um, so let us go to God in prayer. Oh Lord, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are so grateful to be able to come to this beautiful chapel uh, to worship you. So, Lord, still our hearts and minds that we will focus solely on you. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill this chapel and our hearts with your presence, that we will know that we have been uh, in the glory of the resurrected living Savior. Lord, uh, we come from different places and with different things on our hearts and minds, but you're here to meet each of us and minister according to our greatest needs so that we will be transformed by you. So let us not leave here the same as we entered, but because of being in your presence, we will be changed. Lord, I do pray for our country and our nation that you may bless us, that you are bless our community and our families, that we may be a, a shining light to, to the world of freedom and liberty, of justice, of equality, and of love. And so, Lord, it is with the confidence of children of God that we will Pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us from evil. Thy Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Um, let's uh, change up slightly here. Let's let's go ahead and do uh, 696 with America the Beautiful. Will you stand as we sing together? Oh, 
tell them happy 4th of July. Happy 4th. And, and now let us affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. <coughs> Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Unfortunately, uh, Lori is uh, not feeling well this morning and so she's not with us so um, you're going to have to put up with me today uh, our offering plates are in the nar narthex so if you'd like to leave a gift a tithe or an offering to support the ministries of lovely lane chapel please do so as you exit this morning and let us go to god in prayer for those gifts tithes and offerings oh god bless and multiply all that is given that it may do the work of your kingdom Bless the giver, and may we be joyful and generous, that we will share in the work of your kingdom and do your will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we offer all of this to you in Jesus' name and in Jesus' power. Amen. Hey. 
take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Well, it is Independence Day. How, when was the last time uh, you read the Declaration of Independence? Anybody read it in the last year? Hmm. Last five years? Okay. Last ten years? Well, it had been a while since I had read it too, so I wanted to share some of it with you this morning. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted of men among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient <coughs> sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over the states. It then goes on to list a list of grievances that uh, the forefathers gave for their reasoning in declaring independence. And then it concludes, we therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, 
solemnly publish and declare that these United States are and of right ought to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. You know, what's really going on here is our forefathers asserted these rights, that the, the law of nature and nature's God entitled them that the supreme creator and that divine providence required that this action be taken. That they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And I want to ask the question, if these rights are endowed by the Creator, what are our responsibilities? Because with every right comes a responsibility. And so our text this morning comes from Micah chapter 6, uh, parts of verses 3 through 8. My people, what have I done to you? How have I burdened you? Answer me. I brought you up out of Egypt and redeemed you from the land of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you, also Aaron and Miriam. My people, remember what Balak, king of Moab, plotted and what Balaam, son of Beor, answered. Remember your journey from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the righteous acts of the Lord. Remember what I've done for you, says God. And then in verse 8, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. You know, these verses are framed with the references uh, of God bringing the people out of slavery in Egypt uh, from uh, talks about Shittim to Gilgal. Shittim was the last encampment before they went into the promised land and Gilgal was the first encampment when the people entered into the promised land. It, it recalls the Passover and Exodus guided by the pillar of fire and cloud and the miraculous provision of food and water, providing leaders such as Moses, Aram, and Miriam, victory over their enemies, and the wonderful provision that God bestowed upon his people. And what many call one of the greatest passages in the Old Testament God summarizes the nature and requirements of true faith, true religion. No one can act justly and love mercy and walk humbly and fail to please God. And before these conditions can be met, every person must seek peace with and forgiveness from God and one another. John Wesley makes these observations about this key verse in verse 8. God has already told you in his word what you ought to come before him. To render everyone their due. Superiors, equals, inferiors. To be equal to all 
and no, oppress none in body, goods, or name. To be kind, merciful, and compassionate to all, not using severity towards any, and to keep constant fellowship by walking humbly with the Lord. You know what? I believe that these are qualities we need today. I think we could use more of equality, kindness, mercy, compassion, and humility. And these are our responsibilities associated with the rights of independence we claim, I believe. That if we are going to assert independence, which we celebrate on this day, we also have the duty to take on those responsibilities. So as we celebrate Independence Day, let us also remember responsibilities that come with that assertion. That as our forefathers said in the Declaration of Independence, we are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights. But among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And because God has given us those rights, he also has responsibilities for us. Equality, kindness, mercy, compassion, and humility. May we walk humbly with our God and our neighbor. And so as we leave this chapel this morning and we celebrate the independence of this great nation, let us remember those sacred responsibilities of kindness, justice, mercy, and humility that all will see love of God in us and through us and that all people will be treated equally in God's sight. So go in peace, go in love, and go in humility. We 
small crowd, but they were enthusiastic. <laughs> yes. The uh, had a guy yesterday at the White House. He he wanted to call it the loser in the tree. And I says, uh, "Excuse me, sir. No, it's 